Hi there, and uh, welcome to uh, evaluation question one. In what ways does your media product use, develop or challenge forms and conventions of real media products? Firstly, all music videos often nearly f always follow either one of the three categories in Goodwin's theory, narrative, performance and concept. For example, the narrative in a music video would often follow a story based on lyrics like in a music video Waterfalls by TLC. Like the song itself, the video tackles issues of illegal drug trade and in the video a young man goes against his mother's advice to stop selling drugs and is killed before a drug deal. And as for our music video, we follow this concept because the lyrics are talking about an insomniac not being able to sleep and this is signified in our music video in multiple scenes where our main character is stressed but in particular when he's seen in a multiple layering scene in his bedroom not sleeping at the start of our music video. The bedroom scene, for example. Then, with the performance aspect in a music video, there's often a band playing or a singer directing the music to the audience and this could either be throughout the whole video like in Disclosure's song Full For You where the two DJ artists are seen throughout as well as the singer at parts or the performance footage could be shown as at specific parts in the music video as well as a narrative for example with Plan B's song Playing With Fire where the singer Plan B is shown singing at various parts in the song as this is what our music video also follows because as well as a narrative going on there's also performance footage with the singer singing directly to the camera. Goodwin's final category was concept where a music video would often have an abstract feeling to it where it's quite random and has no direct meaning to it. For example in the artist Bondax often follow this as they demonstrated in their music video giving it all. As throughout the video, there's no real concept between the music lyrics and the visuals. And this is common within that specific genre, which is vital for our produ production, as we are using a track from the same genre house, which is why we demonstrated some of this concept aspect in our music video, as we have quite abstract footage at the time, which could be seen as quite random towards the music. For example, these abstract clips. Also, for the narrative structure of a music video, it's common for there to be an opening and a closure. For example, in Coldplay's song, Paradise, visuals signify an animal escaping from the zoo by having an elephant character run away from the zoo to the train station, which was the opening. And then the closure was anchored when the elephant was reunited with the other elephants and walking off into the sunset. And our music video follows this stereotype convention as we have an opening signified by the character starting his day in bed. Then the closure is also signified by the nightmare girl character looking, locking the male character in the Wendy house. In terms of star treatment use, which is a common convention, Clean Bandit don't use star treatment and instead the focus is on the whole band, for example, in their song Rather Be. All the band are shown throughout the video at equal lengths, so there's no star treatment used. However, Faithless do use it, for example, in the song God is a DJ and focus on the singer, even though there's a band behind every song. We were heavily influenced by this as we used the same star treatment towards our singer. Also, another common convention used in music videos is titles at the start and the end. This is because it gives the cinematic feel to the video and as most producers and music videos go on to be produce films it's no surprise that this is a common convention. A good example of this is in the song Paradise by Coldplay as at the start titles are used to introduce the music video in a cinematic approach. However with our music video we prefer to go for the counter type and not include titles as we didn't feel they worked well with our structure for the intro or the ending. Another convention for our genre is nightclub scenes. This stems back to when house music's music videos were first used to advertise clubs and a good example that we looked at was Martin Garrix's song Animals. As there's nightclub scenes throughout, also with this comes the continuous use of flashing lights throughout the video, 
which is also common in house music videos. However, our music video is a counter type of this aspect as we did attempt to film a dance club scene but didn't think it was effective enough to use for our final piece so therefore we went for the counter type in this case. Moving on to genre specifics, another convention is multiple locations used. Throughout the genre in particular it's common to see a variety of locations used throughout the music video and this is mainly because as the videos are mostly concept based a variety of locations are needed in some cases to keep the audience interested and engaged otherwise it could provide some oppositional reading and start to get boring for the audience for example in the music video Rather Be by Clean Pandit they use a variety of locations throughout and this is and this is what we aim to do in our music video to which we achieved by making sure we filmed in a variety of locations for example we filmed in the woods, a river, park, moors, fields, streets, cafe, bedroom, bathroom etc moving on to the digipack and the stereotypical conventions are the font as the titles are bold on the front so they stand out from the background images these titles consist of the artist's name or band's name and the title of the single or album and the arrangement varies but usually they follow the stereotypical convention that the artist's name is larger and above the title of the album or single then the sticker on the front is also a convention used to notify the audience of what the digipack has to offer and usually the text is in this sticker is bold and stands out from the background and the text used in these stickers stereotypically reveal limited edition tracks or a DVD with live footage from a tour or behind the scenes this way the audience are drawn in and appealed in a way that they purchased the product as for the rear side of a digipack, digitization has formed the more regularly used QR codes now which are displayed on the rear side of digipacks which lead to the website of the artist. This way the audience can access the artist online instantly. And a barcode is also commonly found on the rear side of digipacks and each barcode is unique to its CD. Also, copyright print is also a main convention used in digipacks and is usually in the form of small print in the lower part of the back with the copyright and produce logos. Also, record labels being displayed is stereotypical for the rear side of digipacks and these are often shown as logos for each individual label as there could be more than one with conglomerate companies being displayed also. And the track listing is always displayed on the rear side as it's important for the audience to be notified of the tracks that the CD consists of. Usually the tracks will be numbered with the title of each track and then the detailed details of each track will be furthered in a workbook clip, usually. Another common convention usually used is to tie the front of the digipack with the rear and this is effectively achieved when they use the same image but stretched out of both sides or when the colours match up and flow. As well as this is the CD and DVD logo which are found on all products that consist of DVDs and CDs. As for the spine on the digipack, usually on the spine you'd find the title of the album horizontally positioned out down the side with a unique catalogue number specific to that album. Also the record label's logo is normally displayed also here. As for our digipack, ultimately our product product consisted of all these common conventions as it had a unique bold font on the front specific to the artist which we researched and here we have the titles of the artist larger than the title of the album. Also, our sticker works effectively because it notifies our audience of the bonus DVD that would appeal to them and make them more likely to buy our product. We also use QR codes for the rear side of the digipack along with the barcode both specific to our product. And the record labels are also found here, which is common also. 
along with the CD and DVD logos. More importantly, I wanted to pack flows from front to rear, which is significant in qualifying for the common conventions in this way because it works so effectively. And the track listing is also positioned well with the tracks numbered appropriately. Along with the small copyright print that's in the right font size and worded correctly. Moving on to the MAGAD and the stereotypical conventions we found during our research and planning we looked at a range of magazine ads from different genres and used this to round up the main magazine ad conventions. Firstly, what's commonly used are the titles of the artist in large, bold, with the titles of the album below. And these usually throw, flow quite effectively with a range of different font and font sizes. For our magazine ad, we downloaded fonts from websites such as Dafont. These fonts were easy to install onto Photoshop. They also included brief information on the artist, concert dates or tour dates, the release date of a specific album or DVD, an image of the band or artist, a Twitter feed, a QR code, a reference to the record label. The information included on the mag ad different, differentiates between genres. For example, on a dance magazine ad, there would usually be bright colours and large image. In contrast to a rock genre magazine ad, where dark colours would be used. In terms of our magazine ad, I would say that we challenged as well as followed the forms of conventions of real media products. For example, a conventional method we used was an image of our artist on our front cover, which I used a filter on to change the temperature of the image to give it an orange effect. We challenged conventions of using bright images for the dance genre because we incorporated a lot of black into our magazine ad, but this was to link in with both our video and digipack. I would also say that we developed the forms and conventions of media products because we included two promotions, one of digi digipack we created and the tour dates we promoted. My research showed that most magazine ads only promote one or two, so in some ways we have developed this form and convention.